Welcome to the Wiggly Podcast on a windy day. I'm Heather from Wiggly Wigglers. I'm Richard from Wiggly Wigglers. And I'm Farmer Phil. Are you from Wiggly Wigglers, Farmer Some Phil? Some days. <laughs> but mostly I'm from the farm. Mostly from Planet Zog. <laughs> Now, I met up with Jodie last night, and she's become a farmer's wife. And so we did our... Like um, you, then? Yes, we did our Morecambe and Wise impression of out in the garden. She said, how's farming? I said, farming's good. Right. How's your farming? She said, oh, problem with new forest. I said, the eyes. She said, how do you know that? New forest is an eye problem, isn't it, Farmer Phil? It is, yeah. What's it do? It is a... I think it's a bacteria, it gets in the eyes, it's transmitted by flies and the result is that you get an abscess in the eye so that it starts as a spot and then the eye clouds over. Ultimately, if you leave it, usually what happens is the eyeball deforms and the cow or calf usually will probably damage itself and goes blind. Hmm. But, interestingly, even from a most horrendous looking state, one dose of the relevant eye cream, which is the same stuff as we use for humans and all the rest of it, cures it. It takes a few weeks to heal, but effectively the eye comes back 100%. But obviously the sooner you catch it, the better. And if you can see them early on, eye cream, job sorted. So, Jodie's doing fine with her gardening and we continue to play the tennis match and I'm pleased to announce to all you listeners worldwide, over the world, that we thrashed them. Sorry, we'll hope. We didn't really, it was very close. But we did win. We finished the game and I said, have you had a rent review, Jodie? Because she's also on a duchy farm. She said, we have. I said, have they put the rent up, Jodie? She said, they have. And it's a sign of the times, isn't it? Now, I think that our rent review is for Prince Charles's Cufflink Fund. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite expensive, the old rent, isn't it? It is quite expensive. Are you allowed to say how much it costs you to rent a farm? Not possibly not. That well, close? I mean, the, the top the, secret. The, the, the uh, rent for, sensitive. The rent for farms depends on the type of tenancy, so that it would be fair to say that to rent farmland in the UK for our sort of farming would cost anywhere between fifty pounds and say one hundred and sixty pounds an acre. Right. Okay. Now it does depend on succession and all sorts of complicated things. Per but those, annum. those figures do include the buildings and the house that we live in. And do they? So on. Per annum, <laughs> is per annum. Between fifty and six pound an acre. And what would you get from an acre? That, that's not much of a return on an acre, is it? Well, we always used to work on the basis that the rent was about a third. So that the rent was a third, the cost of growing the crop was a third, and then you had a third profit. But it okay. seems to have gone. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rent and the cost of doing it is about three thirds, and there isn't much left. But essentially, that used to be the idea. Okay. But what's interesting is that the price of fertiliser now, to fertilise a crop of wheat as we have been doing to date, and yeah. obviously the figures change, Yeah is now more than the rent for the acre of land, right. which is actually quite a serious thing because <laughs> you're going to have a job to make your figures work. Yeah. You know what he should do, Rich? Uh, spread that cow muck that he's got on the fields instead. It's organic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but that's an that's not good, down that right there. That's, no. that, that's an interesting thing because not only has the bagged product got very expensive, but because of the radical increase in price of fuel and in terms of how many times it's increased for a farmer it's much more than it is at the pump because of the tax versus oil price and the oil price has gone up more than the tax right so that the actual cost of spreading the muck has gone up pro rata more than the cost of fertilizer out of the back oh yeah Moaning old farmer once again. It's Never see a farmer, farmer on a bike. <laughs> Do you know I'm what? Just, I have seen more new one, farm trucks than I've ever seen. Shiny, shiny, shiny metallic farm trucks. And in fact, there's one just outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This week's show, we have Terry Walton coming up on the show and he is looking at his can of worms. And I understand from Facebook, where we've got lots and lots and lots of Terry listeners, that he is going to review your veggie patch, Rich. Is that true? Is that right? Yeah, really? apparently so. They want him 
to come and look at it and pick holes in it. Well, is, this the, is this the wool hope veggie patch, the, the fan, fan, hope, fan hope Ricardo yeah. veggie patch or the wiggly veggie patch? I, I have no idea. Which one is it? Well, I think you've been doing a feature on the Terry Walton podcast all about your garden. No, <laughs> no have I been talking about my garden? I do talk about my garden, of course. Yeah. Get onto Facebook and catch up. Oh, that's that's the answer. Yeah. And we've also got a bean moment. Is that a has-been? Has-been, yeah. No, last night, you know, you, you and I went down to London yesterday. Yeah. And last night, I uh, thought, like, last knockings, I'd go and harvest the broad beans. So I did, and I did a little bit of recording. So it's a, a veg of the month. I like it, Rich. Mm. But the best bit of all is we have a new iTunes review, and it's the US one, and it's not about you two, it's about me. No. Every review we ever have says, I like Farmer Phil best. I think Ricardo is sexy. Well, this <laughs> is my moment, and that's going to be right at the end of the show. What a <laughs> highlight! <laughs> Oh, anyway, in the she meantime... She seems quite chuffed with that, Rich, <laughs> doesn't yeah, she? Just <laughs> a bit. I mean, there's all sorts of things been going on, you know, difficult things with the business, but Heather's afloat purely because <laughs> of this particular... How much do you reckon thing. she had to pay whoever that is, then? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't. Yes, lots of difficult things with the business. We're putting in a new system. We welcome David, who's trying to sort out our stock... <laughs> storage yeah. and this morning is particularly cross because five pallets have turned up instead of four and we're particularly pleased because it's catalogues so we have our new catalogue our new updated catalogue here it looks great but here is one of the problems that we've got it's from Jim he says I'll have to miss out the swear words by the way but you can guess them Heather, it is with some regret that I have to let you know that I am unlikely to place any birdseed orders from you in the future, which is a great shame as I really like your products and what the company stands for. As you can see from the comments on my orders, I've already had one delivery problem while Business Post left his birdseed out in the rain. And it nearly happened again this week as the lazy B dot 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 D <laughs> driver from Business Post just dumped the parcels and couldn't be, uh, another word for that would be bothered, to walk up some steps to check couldn't if any... Couldn't be donkeyed, anyone... you think? Yes. Yeah. Couldn't be donkeyed to walk up some steps to check if anyone was in. We were just lucky that it wasn't raining this time. I've spent the morning trying to get through to the operations manager in Tunbridge, blah, blah. Perhaps you'd have more luck. But just to let you know that their incompetence is damaging your business. Your podcasts will, I am sure, continue to inspire, educate and amuse me. But I fear that you have lost a customer as long as door-to-door deliveries cannot be guaranteed. Regards, Jim. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Do you think we're going to let that stop at that, Jim? I was going to say, <laughs> I, I would think Business Post might be having a call. Do yeah. you think, Jim, that we're going to let you down? I don't think so, Jim. Rach has already been on the big telephone to Louise at Business Post, who's a wonderful woman who will sort it. I have now dealt with, let me see, for five carrier companies in my 18 years in business, and I can happily say that Business Posts are the best. Mm. And one thing's for sure, they'll definitely address the problem, and we will address the problem, Jim, so that your seed doesn't sprout yeah so there we are there's one that we can sort so jim we're on the case let's find out what terry's been up to in south wales give us a bit of background rich to your visit to terry uh what did you do we went down on last last week uh, i think and we had a good scout around the allotment it's all looking rather fine because, you know, Terry was a little bit cynical about wormeries and things like that when I first took it down there, as I, I think a, a possibly an old veteran miser allotment keeper <laughs> would be. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's always a bit of a bore when we, when we get together, but we did a Tales from Terry's Allotment podcast, 
And actually, listen, what would be great is if you could, because some of you guys will almost certainly be listening to that, that podcast as well, if you could go onto the iTunes website and, and give us some reviews as well, which, which <laughs> Heather is always keen to, uh, to get you to do for, for the sure weekly podcast. Make sure they're four stars. Yeah, so that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> five stars. Four. Four stars. <laughs> uh, that would be great. But anyway, so we did a nice little uh, feature for the weekly podcast, and here it is. Right then, Terry. About a year ago, I came out, it was the start of our beautiful relationship, and... Get a bit ruddy, what is? <laughs> this, is and, uh, this is smelling his rhubarb stew again. <laughs> He's attracted the wrong sort. <laughs> and uh, I brought up this wormery, right? And yep. you, I think there was, you know, there was a hint of uh, cynicism, but a bit of scepticism, possibly. You, you thought, oh, that's a nice gift, you know, but I'll, I'll try it out for the for the benefit of this young lad. <laughs> let's go. Let's make the effort to come down to well, see he's me. Come all this way into so in the sunny South Wales. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I'd better give it a try. You, you have it, and uh, I think you, you've realised the error of your of your cynicism, haven't you? Well, I mean, when he came along with it first of all, how, how came this black bin and he put it together? And I thought it was a tear. In. <laughs> <laughs> there was this little tap on the bottom. I thought, God, we have ideal for the cafe. This we can <laughs> we can make we can brew tea in the mass amount. Now instead of put a kettle on. <laughs> but no, I mean, you came along and you. Uh, you set this thing up and you put in these 1,000 English worms who adapted quite well to the world's climate. Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. the, one, the one guy they took in There's from our compost heap have adapted quite well with them. always the way. The English always accept the Welsh. You know, he was, the, the one Welsh one has, has converted these to the sort of way them ways of the world, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I was very cynical and I thought, well, I mean, collecting kitchen waste, I collect that anyway. It goes into my green Daleks. I waste not one, not everything that comes out of the kitchen goes back in the soil. Yeah. But he knew, convinced me then, this, these little worms would munch on this stuff. They were fairly well behaved. There was never any problem. They would keep breeding and then doing things that worms do. Right. They would munch up all this food, and in the bottom would become this worm pee. And I thought, oh, worm pee, what's that do then? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and they say it's good for the complexion, but I haven't tried it yet. I mean, I haven't tried it with anything else. Sorry. But I mean, just, the, just as well. You know, and uh, this this wonderful liquid started coming out. So I started adding it to my watering can last year, and I, yeah. I started feeding mainly my tomatoes, things in the greenhouse, and they they really flourished. And this year now, I mean, one of the secrets of this year, this year has been to me, I'm going more, even though I've got a large allotment here, I'm still a greedy gardener, yeah. and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great advocate of container growing. Yeah. And this is something which this lots is, of people can is, do is, now, don't have an allotment, you, some bins dotted around, and you've got quite a dense area there of bins, yeah. and I've got some magnificent crops in here. I mean, I've got these two first year grown parsnips in bins, I was a bit sceptical about that, but they, I'm fearing these continually on worm pee, and they are the yeah, healthiest, are magnificent whoppers, looking they? things. Yeah. And next to them, there's two rows of carrots which are almost on the verge of being pulled. Yeah. They are being fed on the byproducts of this wormony. Yeah. And all along the wall there, you see? Yeah. I've got radish and spring onions oh, yeah. and all the rest growing. And all of them, are, you know, with containers, they do run out of food fairly quickly. Yeah. And you want some natural organic material to put back. Yeah, and yeah. the wormony seems to be the answer. Yeah. It really has made all these things thrive. It does. It's container growing is, uh, I mean, you know, I think we might have talked about it on the weekly podcast, uh, but only briefly, really. Never gone into any real detail about container growing but it is something that's really achievable in such a small space isn't it when I mean, you've got uh, how many different pots have you got there in uh, what, what is what, what know, 12 two, inches four, 12 inch there's, there's six inch they, they, they have florist buckets you yeah, know yeah when you walk on the main street when they empty your flowers you nick it <laughs> 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 and they are perfect for salad crops right. and again with salad crops particularly radishes you don't want many you can't eat radishes in vast amounts so you can see you know, on either about a four to five week cycle in these things so you can keep adding these every two to three weeks these radishes and you continually add in empty salad same yeah. with the spring onions yeah. you know i got three stages and pulling spring onions then i'll spring onions again i got some smaller ones coming behind yeah, yeah. so I, I can save my ground for the larger crops which i need for the all year round use and i can have perfect salad crops growing in these yeah. but you do have to feed them and if yeah. you're going to go out and buy in these proprietary foods constantly then some of the value disappears. You know? yeah, I'm, sure. I'm not a man to spend does, my money you know, uh, unwisely, does. so I mean, I, I'm looking for cheap solutions. Yeah, yeah, I know. I realise that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, I think that's the, the, the beauty of this setup here, right? Is you've got a wormery, which is uh, relatively small and inconspicuous, and it's um, but it does manage to contain sufficient amounts of waste, so it's something that's completely useful in its own right. And then you've got a strip of containers with a host of different things in. So really, it's it's this kind of holistic approach to growing veg. You know, it's all been sown in succession. You've got a constant supply of plant food here that comes off the back of what you what you chuck under your kitchen sink and your kitchen caddy yep. uh, once every week. And it's, it's, it's a perfect scenario for people that don't have much space. 
But what again? I mean, I, I'm 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 on my third layer of this compost now, and I'm collecting these in bags. It's too precious to put on my soil. I don't want. I got plenty of well rotted organic manure. But this is brilliant for next year now. Again, when I'm planting all my sowings, I'm mixing this with standard compost, and it goes that much further, and it's all free again. So I'm saving money yet again on this compost. And I mean, the, the success with last year's broad beans. That's absolutely astounded me. I had, yeah. I had the best looking broad beans, the healthiest was, looking was, broad beans. I, I think I wrote about that recently in a little article I did for an allotment magazine about your, uh, the, the broad beans that you were, you were amazed that you've got such, such fine quality specimens off the back of worm poo. And again, one of the things with a crop, if you, if you haven't got a good solid plant to start life, you're not going to get a, a, a good crop off them. They need to be healthy, they need to grow well. And I'm going to have a magnificent crop of broad beans, which I'm picking quite well at the moment. So I'll be eating them all for the winter now, right. all thanks to the, the byproduct of this wormery. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah I was extremely sceptical, this little three-tiered thing here was going to be full of this compost, it's going to give me all this worm pee which I'm going to use, and I, don't, I, I couldn't believe it, valley with us, so, so yes, yeah, I am a so converting I've achieved, man. I've achieved something. You've achieved, I mean, <laughs> you've achieved that now, and then, yeah. it's, it's brilliant from the point of view of people with small gardens, put the containers, you're looking for the feed, and you're looking for your kitchen waste use, you can use this, you're not putting it to landfill, you're not you're recycling it quite good, and all the byproduct is going back in. But people with containers next year as well, when you mix that with the stuff you're going to put back in these containers, you won't go to go out and buy vast amounts of compost either. No, no. So you, you, you're constantly producing your own needs, so it's Perfect. brilliant from our point of view. Absolutely brilliant. Fabulous. Yeah. So Terry's enjoying his can of worms, Eric. He is. Is he? Yes, very is much he? so. He is, he's, he's chuffed a bit to this can of worms, and I'm chuffed a bit that he's chuffed a bit. Are you chuffed a bit? Indeed. Are you chuffed a bit, Farmer Phil? Mostly. If Terry's chuffed a bit, that's good enough for me. Well, I'm chuffed a bit because Michael has put our new web shop up, and here we have a few comments uh, on the web shop, and then a few reviews online because you can now pop to our web shop and put up a review. Now, darlings, if you've got a can of worms and you love it, for goodness sake, go and review the can of worms because one lady's had hers since 2006 and she's got trouble with flies. And that's the only one we've got at the moment. But this is recorded at, on the 15th of July at 1.27. So I expect we've got more now. Here we go. Rosemary says, it looks really great. Love the pictures. I've added a review and an order. Just one teeny tiny point. I was thinking about ordering a T-shirt but I couldn't quite read the wording on them. But it's all looking really good. Well... I like the T-shirts, you know. But the, I, but I, the I, thing is, but the thing is yeah. we're going to have bigger pictures. Uh, so that's see. space right, too. Right. You like the T-shirts, don't you? Bigger yeah. pictures or a bigger computer, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a swanky new laptop now, you know, Phil. I saw, yeah. Mr. Techo over hey, here. I'll tell you what, I'm getting into it a little bit now these days. You know, I'm, I'm changing my way. I was saying to Heavy yesterday that I'm starting to enjoy the whole technical experience it's a uh, pc rich yeah well you know he's, <sighs> he's discovered that women use facebook that's all that's happened, <laughs> isn't it? heather yeah. says and this is not heather me another heather says i like the web shot i haven't bought anything yet but i'm sure i will i'm impressed with the design of it because i'm wrestling with a shopping cart on my own website myself nicola says i think it looks great any new launch is exciting abigail says the Wiggly Shop looks lovely. A new website going live is like welcoming a new member of the family home. So you must be very happy and proud. Abby. Mm. <laughs> and lastly, let's see. It looks fab. K. Okay. <laughs> I like that one. Shall we find out about your beans, Mr. Fishbourne? The beans. Okay. Means Heinz. Means, means Heinz. Did you know yeah. that they're not going to put that on the can anymore? They are not going to put baked beans. They're not. Because they think baked beans makes beans sound more complicated than they are. Really? Baked beans. Good Lord. They're just going to put beans. Beans. Is that sort of dumbing down? Isn't society supposed to be getting more intelligent? It seems as though we're getting less intelligent. What's that grunting? It's your dog. Oh. Mm. I thought it was Phil first, you know. <laughs> I'm in a little dream. Don't disturb He's, he's gone into bunny chasing mode. Before we hear about your beans, how's your beans, Phil? I haven't got any beans. Let's hear about yours then. <laughs> Hustling. <laughs> the uh, my, my beans are absolutely fine. I went up last night after we'd got back from our jolly down to the big smoke. I thought, you know, in keeping with my last P 
episode. <laughs> oh, the, the veg of this month is the broad bean. Whitkium. And aquadils. This is a beautiful time of day. It's very quiet. I've just had my tea and I've come to get the broad beans up. Funny things, broad beans. I used to hate the flavour of these things when I was a kid. I remember sitting at the dinner table and made to sit there until I'd eaten all my broad beans. So needless to say, I used to sit there until about half past eleven and uh, long past my bedtime until mum came in and took my plate away and sent me off to bed. I need to say the plate was still full of broad beans. <laughs> I, uh, I love the flavour of them now. My Sarah adores broad beans. They're probably her favourite veg. It's funny, you know, uh, I put a, a comment in the catalogue oh, probably, possibly last year now about the fact that broad beans, if they're scun, it just makes a makes for a, a, a more delicate meal. And it's true that if you take the bean, if you take the skin off the bean, you get a very tasty, soft, succulent little bean. Bit of a fiddle, but you need less of them somehow if you do that. It just makes for a slightly more refined feast. The most amazing thing about broad beans, though, is when you split them, listen to those guys crunch. And you've got this wonderful, soft, fluffy centre. And inside are these most beautiful, light green coloured gems. One of the few vegetables that freeze really well. We pull them up now. Some of these have been feasted on by mice. And we blanch them a little bit. And then they sort of keep us going, really. We sort of dip into the broad bean collection over the next four or five months in the freezer and they taste gorgeous not as good as they do fresh of course but still nice you get loads of them as well this year I've tried a couple of different varieties I tried I kept some seed um, managed to keep a bit of seed from the year before last I'm not sure what variety they were and this year I tried some wickium and some aquadols the aquadols seem a little bit smaller than the wickium but I can't really determine which variety they are by taste so I'm kind of thinking that they must taste very similar you know you can plant quite a big area of broad beans and it's a crop that you can harvest early what I tend to do is is fill that space with winter greens after the beans have come out of the ground like peas they improve the ground you know they the root structure they've got all these little tiny nodules on now I'm looking at the the roots last year I left the roots in the ground and I'm kind of thinking that the, the nodules that attract all the nitrogen, fix all the nitrogen in the soil, will break down and, and release the nitrogen again progressively whilst the spring greens are growing. But this year I'm going to take the roots out and see if there's a, a notable difference between the quality of the growth of the spring greens or not. What a feast. I have a huge basket of beans here. And uh, I'm going to do this now. Now, you see, you remember podcast 136? Uh, well, it depends. I don't remember the number, but I'm kind of thinking where we were in terms of arguing and the like. Yeah, I'm going to put the tin hat on 136, like the cats. I've succeeded in ending the cat row, haven't okay. I, Rich? Um, I don't know. I, I, no, you? no, not really, but <laughs> okay. never mind. Here we go. Um, Dear cheerful Heather, I immensely enjoy your podcast on the weekends, particularly doing the ironing. And they really helped me getting the pace down from busy working in town to the countryside with time to myself. However, number 136 in particular, its end was disappointing as it actually wound me up. Richard and Phil are two grown men who should be able to discuss these interesting topics without getting into petty arguments. Rich is right. Biodiversity suffers from chemicals. Phil is right, one needs to turn a profit, and commercial farmers are different. Rich is right, hedgerows are important for biodiversity. Phil is right, hedgerows are a lot of work. I may sound terribly naive here, as I'm not a farmer, and therefore I'm likely to overlook implications, but I believe both their standpoints are valid, and rather than descend into acrimony, as was exhibited, they should come up 
with solutions. For example, what is hindering Phil in doing what Rich believes is better for the environment? And how can we take measures to remove those hindrances? And then ask the listeners for support to lobby their government to implement these. I notice I sound rather pro-regulation in this. I am not. The reason is that the government sits in the pot of money entitled farm subsidies and what they dish out for them has profound implications on farmers' actions. Rant over. I am now hurrying to episode 137 and hope it will lift my mood again. Wiggly greetings, Nadine from Luxembourg. What I'm going to do is put your complete post up on the blog so that these lads can study it and so can everyone else. Any comment within five words, Farmer Phil and Ricardo. Anything you want to say on the subject of 136 before I close it and stamp it. Done. For the last time. Well, all I would like to say is that That's I... That's five words. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect that these sorts of arguments go on possibly the world over because the arguments are deeply held. Rich believes implicitly what he says and I believe implicitly what I say. And the solution, if there is one, is some middle way. It was demonstrated by your interview, Rich, last week on the podcast by the the farmer John John Gossip. Gossip. He was actually saying, to my mind, what is the middle way? That you take the successful elements of organic farming and you bring them into the successful elements, the truthfully successful elements of so-called conventional farming. The result is right. Is it all about passion then, Rich? I think so. It's all about passion. Oh, see, I knew he'd be succinct. (laughs) Wearing a shirt like that, he'd have to be. (laughs) <laughs> it's only got toothpaste on my shirt. Is that what it is? <laughs> it is. It's I thought it was pigeon food. I've got bacon fat there <laughs> from a bacon roll I had the day before yesterday. It's just scratchy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's good, isn't Honestly. it? Listen, we're coming up to the greatest review we've ever had. Right. I expect you're on the edge of your seat. Next week, we've got your interview with Lindsay Neal. What's she been up to? Well, Lindsay came out to us a, a while ago. Gosh, I mean, was it was about a year ago or something more. And I remember, because I, in fact, I probably mentioned it to her during our interview. I remember distinctly walking into the office and she was having a little rattle with Rachel and your ears pricked up. And he said, nappies, nappies. Anyway, there's this feeling of, why is this mad woman coming into our office? And what I do remember want to do? that. But she's been very successful with her, with, her, with her nappy composting project. It was a really sort of geared around a family, but they've achieved to compost all their nappies throughout the, the young life of their babies through the um, actions of our earthworms, because we sent her off with, uh, with a whole bunch of composting worms and she's done extremely well. Fantastic. How many nappies has she managed to compost then? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I can't remember, but I know all the information is in the show, so you'll have to tune in next week, Hev. Me? Indeed. All right yeah. then, I'll do that. TB free, Farmer Phil? Yep, we've. Um, TB test- or not TB? We've tested and we've tested and we've chunted and we didn't have TB in the first place and now we have tested clear. Good. Which is good news. It is good news. Isn't but we're just about, so when we get to uh, October again, we have to test again then because we're on 12 monthly testing. So no doubt at that point we'll get these inconclusive reactors, which are animals that have probably been exposed to TB, but they managed to shrug it off. And it, it's actually testing them through that period when they overcome it and shrug it off. Well, it's all a bit stressful because it stops us selling things and all the rest of it. It's all hassle. But anyway, the good news is we haven't got TB. And probably even better news is that means our badgers haven't got TB. Right. But no thanks to the government. Ooh, a massive topic. To be or not to be. To call or not to call. Anyway, we've got some feedback on Facebook about the RSPCA's petition called Back Off Badgers from Kate. And so I would like to talk about that next week and I would like to hear both of your views on badgers and TB and cattle. So next week we've got a packed show with composting nappies and TB in badgers and cattle. I can't wait. (laughs) Good. 
But just before <laughs> the end of the show, what you've all been waiting for is our latest iTunes reviews on the US iTunes site. And the thing is, it's from Brad from Florida. And I love him already. <laughs> <laughs> you do, do you? I, I do. You've been rattling about this yes, review. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, since, it's, since it's been up. We'd be very appreciative if you'd like to go to the UK site or even better ones all over the world because we don't know if there's any on, for example, the Swedish site or the Dutch site or the South African site if there are these iTunes. So if you put a review up on your own iTunes, it would be brilliant if you did that, but also let us know so that we know to go to that particular nation to read out the review. And is that what you've done here? I've gone to the US one right. because I, I keep account of the US and the UK, but obviously I couldn't spend my life going to the different nation sites because I'd be here all day. So if you put one up, let us know, and that would be brilliant. So here we go, Rich. Would you like to read out this review? Pass it over, then. Let's it's a five-star, eh? It's a five-star. Oh, I wouldn't expect anything less. OK. Stupendous. That's a good start, isn't it? And this is from Brad from Florida. Hi, Brad. <laughs> Not since Barbara from Good Neighbours, he says. That's wait, the good life. OK, the good life, OK. Felicity Kendall. <laughs> Have I been so smitten by a Brit? Woo! Woo! <laughs> 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 he says, whether discussing the mundane or the monumental, this trio... Yeah, in yeah, brackets, yeah. I should mention the gentleman is always entertaining, informed, and positively inspiring. Congrats and thank you. Rocket, banana, <laughs> corking, oh, farming. It's, uh, it's, it's our pleasure, even though we only do get a fleeting mention <laughs> and bracketed nonetheless. But, but there you go. You've, 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 <laughs> you've made you've made Heather's day. In fact, you've made Heather's week. So, thanks for that. Yeah, and the bum. Felicity Kendall won Best Bum of the Year. Did she really? 1978, I think. So, what do you think of mine? I, I think you've got a lovely arse. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer Phil? I think Felicity Kendall was described as the thinking man's totty of the year as well. Uh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Thank go. you, Richard, uh, for that. It's made my week. And so... Please, thank you. <laughs> and so, thank you very much for tuning in to the Wiggly Podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it anywhere near as much as we've enjoyed making it, but I doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have a chance, please do us a review and tune in to next week's exciting show because I, for one, cannot imagine composting poop in nappies. Bye. Bye. Bye from me.